Hey what's going on guys Tanmaya for simple snippets and this is a complete new video tutorial series and as the title of the video suggests this is going to be on core java programming tutorials for beginners and intermediate level programmers and IT students so yes we are starting off with the new complete playlist so there are going to be around 50 to 60 video tutorials in this entire playlist series and it's all going to be about core java programming and of course I'll upload another series for advanced java but in this entire playlist we are going to be focusing on core java programming tutorials as it is one of the most wanted playlist and i also took a poll recently wherein this programming language was voted highest and most of you guys requested me to upload new video tutorial series on this topic so yeah this is the very first video tutorial and it's going to be theoretical wherein if you are just a beginner or if you're just starting off with java programming then make sure you watch this video till the end because we're going to be covering the basics that is the introduction of java programming we'll talk about a history and the features and lastly we'll also take a comparison between c++ programming and java programming so with that being said let's get started with today's topic so before you start off let me just tell you a little bit of prerequisites and information about this entire playlist and entire subject that is core java so these video tutorials are for anyone and everyone who wants to learn java programming and especially for information technology and computer science students this entire playlist is mainly focusing towards beginners to intermediate level programmers and who already know c++ programming so it will be very beneficial if you already know c++ programming and now you are starting off with java because a lot of concepts from c++ especially the object oriented part have direct reference and you can easily relate to them because the concepts are pretty much same for the object oriented part so i would recommend that if you are complete zero in programming i would recommend that you start off with c++ programming and i have a complete playlist which comprises of around 50 to 60 videos on this channel so you can check that out as well and lastly we'll start off with netbeans id for java programming so i am going to be using netbeans id and i know eclipse is more used in the industry and in the real world scenario but then it's a little bit difficult to configure and netbeans is sort of like a plug and play and it has almost all the features of eclipse just that eclipse is more configurable and has more plugin support but netbeans is very easy to use so we'll be using netbeans id for this java programming throughout this tutorial series so starting off with java programming let's take an introduction this entire video is probably only video which is going to be theoretical and maybe a couple of videos wherein we discuss some concepts like jvm jre in the further video tutorials and rest of them are mostly going to be practical because i believe programming should be learned more via practicals and not just by theory but to start off we need to understand some basic theoretical concepts so java is a programming language and a platform so why is it so because java is a high level robust secured and object oriented programming language and why is it a platform because any hardware or software environment in which a program runs is known as a platform so since java has its own java runtime environment it is also called as a platform and of course we'll take a look at jre jvmn jdk in more detail in further videos so right now we'll just understand it as a, at an overview level so moving forward a little bit about history of java so java programming language was originally developed by sun microsystems and it is currently acquired by oracle corporation which was initiated by james gosling and released in 1995 as a core component of the sun microsystem that is the java platform and as of now as of today that is 3rd of march 2018 if you visit the oracle website the stable release that you will be able to download is java se 9.0 0.4 and this se stands for standard edition and i'll come to you on what is se and what is ee mean in just a minute so moving ahead talking about the features of java yes java is a very diverse programming language and it has a lot of features much more than c++ so it is object oriented yes mostly and we are going to be dealing with objects and classes throughout this entire series we're not going to be looking into the procedural part there is no procedural part we'll directly be starting with the object oriented part and that's the reason why i told you that a lot of things would be related to c++ so if you are coming from a c++ background things would be very easy to understand the java is a simple language because it's pretty much similar to c++ and intended for beginners and intermediate level programmers so if you are an it student and starting off with programming typically c++ java and python are the programming languages that are very easy to understand java is a secured language because it has its own jvm inside which the program runs it is platform independent which means that the intermediate result that is the byte code which we will talk in detail can be ported onto any platform with any os so it is sort of like write once and run anywhere kind of scenario of course we will talk in detail about this platform independence and individual features of java 
in detail when we move ahead in this entire playlist it is a robust and reliable programming language because it does not have the concept of pointers and there is no memory leak issues it is portable it is architecture neutral which again indirectly means it is platform independent it is dynamic in nature and also diverse it is interpreted so it is not just compiled it is both compiled and interpreted so java code is first compiled into a byte code and then interpreted line by line so the basic difference between a compiler and an interpreter is compiler compiles the entire code and converts it into object code however interpreter converts the high level language line by line into the low level machine language java is high performance and it is also multi threaded multi threaded means multiple tasks run simultaneously and it is a inbuilt feature which is not present in c++ that we'll see in the comparison as well so this was just a overview of features of course we'll talk in detail about all these features as we move ahead in this entire playlist so where is java used well i should be actually questioning that where is java not used because java is such a diverse language as i mentioned it is pretty much used in almost every type of application for example desktop applications that is the basic softwares antiviruses and all that you use then we have web applications so we have dynamic websites built on top of java we have enterprise applications which are big applications that completely handle a entire enterprise such as erp applications then we have mobile applications for example android wherein the backend code is written in java embedded systems smart cards robotics games and what not so java is pretty much used almost in every domain and that is one one of the biggest reason why java is a very famous and always in the top 10 programming languages moving ahead there are different types of java applications that is standalone application which would be the softwares and the softwares that you use for example any antivirus software or any calculator or any or any basic ma management software then we have web applications that is the dynamic websites then we have enterprise level applications and we have mobile applications so based on these type of applications we have different platformer editions so when we start off with java programming we will be downloading the java se standard edition so this was the one that i was telling you before so oracle has segregated these into four different types because each of them have their individual classes which we will be using so java standard edition is used for the core concept that is the core java part wherein we can develop console based applications as well as the software based that is the standalone applications that's why the standard edition then we have java ee which is the enterprise edition which is more focused towards the web development aspect of course it is built on top of se so all the se features will also be there but then using this we will be developing robust web applications and this comes as a part of the advanced java part so we'll be more focusing on java se then we also have java me which is java micro edition and this is mainly used to develop mobile applications and lastly we have java fx which is used to develop rich internet applications and it uses lightweight user interface so in java fx more of the focus is given on the user interface and it uses lightweight and more functional user interface so this was a little bit about java platforms and editions however we are going to be focusing on java se we'll be developing console as well as the user interface software oriented standalone applications in this entire playlist series and lastly coming to the basic comparison between c++ and java so this will be more relevant if you are coming from a c++ background and starting off with java so talking about platform independence c++ is platform dependent and java is platform independent so to understand this when c++ is compiled the object code that it forms is platform dependent which means for a c++ code running on linux the object code will be different than for the object code on the windows for that same code and that is why it is dependent on platform which means that it is de dependent upon how the os executes the instructions however in java what happens is since it is a compiled as well as interpreted language the compiler first converts the entire code into an intermediate code which is known as byte code now this byte code is platform independent so if you take that byte code from a platform which is on windows os and you just transfer it to another platform say for example linux or mac os that byte code will be executed successfully on those other platforms also so that's what platform independent means so c++ is mainly used for system programming which means that it is more useful in making system softwares like drivers and softwares which are close to os because of its use of pointers and all however java is mainly used for application programming and it is widely used in windows web based enterprise and mobile applications so the applications which are running on top of the os layer then c++ supports go to statement java does not support that c++ supports multiple inheritance we've already seen that in my playlist so if you've been watching the c++ playlist we have talked about multiple inheritance and java does not support multiple inheritance through classes however it can be achieved via interfaces 
So interfaces is a one concept in Java which we will be looking further in this video tutorial series. Talking about operator overloading, C++ supports operator overloading and Java doesn't support operator overloading. Talking about pointers, C++ supports pointers and you can write pointer program explicitly but Java supports pointer internally however you cannot create a pointer in in Java. So that access is only given to the system. Compiler and interpreter. Now C++ uses only compiler. However, Java uses both compiler and interpreter. Call by value and call by reference. So C++ supports both of these. Java supports only call by value. There is no call by reference since we cannot create pointers in Java. Talking about structures and unions. C++ supports structures and unions and Java doesn't support structures and unions. Thread support. Now C++ does not have built-in multi-threading. However, Java has built-in multi-threading which means multiple processes can run simultaneously and we can achieve two tasks at, at a single time. Of course, we'll see the entire process in detail wherein I'll dedicate separate video tutorials just for multi-threading. Talking about virtual keywords, C++ supports virtual keywords so that we can decide whether or not to override a function. So we've already seen virtual keyword and function overriding. But in Java, there is no virtual keyword. We can override all non-static methods by default which means that non-static methods are virtual by default. So this was a little bit of C++ versus Java comparison and I'm pretty sure you can understand the difference if you are coming from a C++ background. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the basics of Java. We just went through the introduction. We saw the history. We saw a little bit of features and where exactly Java is used. And we also took a basic comparison between C++ and Java. And I know things are pretty much theoretical as of now. And we'll be understanding more about Java in detail because this is a beginner's level course and I'm going to teach you at a very basic level. So I'm pretty sure you'll understand each and every concept as we move through this entire playlist. So in the next video, we'll probably see what is the difference between JDK, JRE and JVM. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. And that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.